an overview of fine motor skills from an OT perspective, presented to you by Heather Keyes, Autumn Air, and Cynthia Reese. What are fine motor skills? Fine motor skills involve the use of smaller muscles of the hands, commonly used in activities such as grasping pencils, cutting with scissors, building with Legos, buttoning or tying, and opening lunch containers. Fine motor skill efficiency significantly influences the quality of the task outcome as well as the speed of task performance. Efficient fine motor skills require a number of independent skills to work together to appropriately manipulate objects or perform tasks. The most important mechanical tools that students bring to the classroom are their hands. Good fine motor skills. There is a lot required for the development of good fine motor skills. Adequate hand strength. There are many muscles in the hand required for different tasks. We must consider if these muscles have developed. Dexterity. Is the child able to manipulate objects? Perceptual and visual motor integration. Is the child properly interpreting what they see? And are they able to then duplicate that image? Sensory motor skills. There are many factors to consider, such as, is the child able to sit still? Is the child bothered by loud or background noises? Is the child able to apply the appropriate amount of pressure when manipulating a pencil or another object? It may be helpful to use a ball chair, a wiggle seat, or a tea stool. And Giving breaks to jump on a trampoline or to do jumping jacks may be helpful. Proximal shoulder stability and core strength. Is the child able to sit erect and does the child have proper shoulder strength and good posture? Core stability, proprioception, and gross motor warm-ups. This is where OT and PT often overlap. However, these topics are very important in preparing a child to sit down at the table before fine motor work. What is core stability? Core stability refers to the group of muscles around your trunk and back that stabilize movements and enable upright posture. Poor core stability results in a slumped posture with the student laying their head down on the desk or propping their head in their hands. Core stability is necessary for improving handwriting skills. If a student cannot hold themselves upright for long periods of time, their handwriting struggles will continue no matter what other support you put in place. A weak core can transition into inattention and inability to focus and learn. The student is unable to sit still for long periods of time because their muscles cannot remain engaged. Looking up and down at the board to copy a sentence can be tiring and difficult. They may have difficulty stabilizing their paper with their non-dominant hand, and they may struggle holding a pencil or completing a task requiring in-hand manipulation as the body is more concerned with remaining upright. What is proprioception? Proprioception is a sensory system that receives input from muscles and joints throughout the body regarding body position, weight, pressure, stretch, and movement. Students with proprioceptive dysfunction appear clumsy, have trouble sitting still, and frequently bump into objects or other people. They have trouble grading their movements. These students have difficulty knowing where they are in space. They may have a, they may move a lot as they try to give themselves input into where they are in space. Students may also present with a pencil grasp that is too weak or too strong, impacting legibility. So holding the pencil too tightly 
results in lines that are very dark. Pencil points break, erasers create smudges and the paper tears. It can also result in muscle fatigue in the hands as well as slow and messy handwriting. And holding the pencil too lightly results in writing that is difficult to see and letters that cannot be discerned from one another. Writing is easily smudged and the pencil may be held, may not be held securely. Sometimes students begin holding too tightly, but with fatigue begin holding the pencil too lightly. Gross motor warmups consist of activities that are designed to target core stability and proprioceptive awareness prior to handwriting instruction. A few examples of these are animal walks, chair and wall push-ups, air riding, jumping jacks, wheelbarrow walking, body letter formation, and if feasible, working on handwriting after outdoor recess. Each of these activities help to improve co-activation of the shoulder and postural muscles. Proprioception activities and exercises allow the muscles to wake up with heavy pressure. Exercises that require weight bearing through the arms are optimal for improving both core stability and proprioceptive awareness. They allow the modulation of pressure through the muscles and joints of the core and arms. Optimal posture for handwriting. Students should be seated in a desk or chair when working on handwriting. Feet should be flat on the floor with a small step, box, or book placed under the feet if necessary to help obtain a flat foot position. A good rule to remember is the 90-90-90 rule. Hips, knees, and ankles should all be at 90 degrees of flexion. Developmentally, kids are able to sit for various lengths of time to work on paper and pencil tasks. Movement breaks can be beneficial before, during, and or after handwriting tasks. There is a developmental progression when it comes to pencil grasp. There are three stages, the initial stage, the transitional stage, and the mature grasp stage. The initial, initial stage is when the child is using their whole arm to color. The second stage or the transitional stage is where the forearm and wrist move with increased stability. Lastly is the mature pencil grasp, which is when the child is using the mobility in their fingers and hands to manipulate a pencil properly. A tripod grasp, which is a mature grasp, is typically developed in children between ages five through seven. One of the most common problems occupational therapists in the school are consulted about is an improper pencil grasp. While the most efficient way to hold a pencil is the dynamic tripod grasp, there are many other patterns that are commonly seen in children that do not always require intervention or modification. The dynamic tripod grasp is held between the thumb and index finger with the pencil resting on the middle finger. Children hold their pencils in patterns other than the dynamic tripod grasp for a variety of reasons, but one of the most common reasons is because they are participating in writing before their hands are developmentally ready. Tips and tricks for improved pencil grasp. OTs use various tools to improve and encourage proper pencil grasp. Instead of using full-size crayons that can be held using a fisted grasp, give small broken crayons that will encourage the student to hold using a more proper grasp. Small hands cannot hold and manipulate a regular size pencil well, so start with a shorter three inch size pencil, such as a golf pencil, which will also help to prevent a fisted grasp. Pencil grips can be utilized for a more functional and accurate grasp of a pencil. When used correctly, a pencil grip can help develop fine motor skills and improve control when writing. Hand strengthening and fine motor activities, such as pulling resistive toys, squeezing out wet sponges, Play-Doh, resistive pegs or clothespins, squeezing a spray bottle, or cutting a slit in a tennis ball and feeding 
the tennis ball small objects such as pennies or beads can be performed to improve pencil grip. For students who hold their pencil straight up rather than resting against the web space, a handy writer can be used. This pulls the pencil into proper position as well as has an object to hold using the ring and little finger so that the correct fingers are grasping the pencil. There is a rubber band hack that simulates the handy writer and any small object such as a pom-pom or bead can be used to isolate those ulnar digits. OT recommendations. If you were to purchase or to ask us for the type of items we typically use or recommend for carryover in the classroom, these are a few of the most common items. Our favorite pencil grips that seem to work best for our students are the grotto grips and loop grippers. Another fun item to utilize in the classroom are the handwriting without tears flip crayons. These are small double-sided crayons that promote fine motor skills by flipping the crayon from one color to another. Tracing shapes and letters. When assessing a student's readiness for writing, one of the first things that we consider as an OT is whether or not a child is able to form basic lines and shapes according to the developmental milestones. Tracing, Tracing shapes and letters. Students must exhibit readiness strokes before writing. The developmental progression of pre-writing lines and shapes begins with vertical and horizontal strokes, progressing to curved and diagonal lines. For vertical lines, start at the top and progress down, and for horizontal lines, draw from left to right. Circles need to start at the top and form counterclockwise, like the letter C. Squares need to be taught by drawing line down, line down, across left to right, across left to right. Teaching the correct formation and direction of lines and shapes directly affects letter formation as all letters start at the top and short lines are formed left to right. Tips and tricks for tracing. Kids learn by doing so they should be encouraged to trace shapes and letters using various methods. These methods can provide the student with a sensory approach to handwriting that can better help to integrate the movement and information. A couple examples of, of these types of methods include the following. Rolling out Play-Doh to form lines, shapes, or letters over a model. Tracing letters with a finger over a Play-Doh model. Tracing letters with shaving cream or sand on a tray using wood pieces to form over letters or to build shapes and letters, drawing on a dry erase or chalkboard and finger tracing to erase, handwriting without tears wet dry try method, and tracing over solid yellow lines instead of broken lines. Handwriting and letter formation. When assessing a child's handwriting in OT, we look at uppercase, lowercase, and number skills. This includes memory, orientation, meaning that the child does not have reversals of letters, their placement on a line, the sizing of letters, where they start their letters, their sequence, meaning that they're forming the letter using the appropriate steps in the correct order, their control, and spacing. Handwriting and letter formation. Handwriting is a motor skill that can be improved through practice, repetition, feedback, and reinforcement. Use a handwriting program such as Handwriting Without Tears. The progression for handwriting is modeling, tracing, copying, then writing letters and words from memory. There is a saying, by eight, it's too late. Motor patterns are typically developed and established by the third or fourth grade, making it challenging to correct a student who has poor handwriting as the child must be motivated to change or practice 
for the expected outcome. Therefore, the goal shifts from correcting letter formation to producing legible handwriting. Tips and tricks for letter formation and handwriting. Use lined paper to provide appropriate boundaries when writing. This helps to prevent roller coaster writing and it helps to prevent large oversized letters. Introduce uppercase letters before lowercase letters. Form letters from top to bottom and left to right. Use consistent formation terminology. Handwriting without tears uses big lines, little lines, big curves, and little curves. Use a hands-on sensory-based approach. Provide starting visual cues for each letter, such as dot start points or stickers. Work on positional words, <clears throat> such as top, middle, bottom, beside, and next. Use a highlighter to trace the baseline of the paper and use finger space method between words or popsicle sticks or other spacers. In the occupational therapy room, we utilize the Handwriting Without Tears curriculum. It is a developmentally based handwriting program with a multi-sensory approach to teaching and remediating handwriting. It begins with uppercase letter formation, followed by lowercase letter formation, and then lastly, number formation. Letters are not introduced in this curriculum in the typical A to Z order. Instead, they are grouped based on developmental pre-writing skills. For example, the curriculum starts with uppercase letters that have vertical and horizontal lines only, like F and E, before introducing letters with diagonals and curved lines like uppercase letters K, R, or N. Cutting. Being able to properly use scissors is an important school-related task but what is most important is how the practice of using scissors can aid in the development of many other skills, such as visual motor integration, bilateral coordination, and fine motor strength, just to name a few. Just like with other fine motor tasks, there is a developmental progression to cutting with scissors and adaptive techniques that can be utilized to promote success. prerequisite skills in developmental order prior to cutting. These are some of the skills required to consider before a child can learn to cut properly. Tearing paper, strong hand and wrist muscles to open and close scissors, sitting up in a chair with feet flat on the floor, sitting with both arms toward the midline, holding scissors appropriately, with thumb up position independently with forearm rotated, opens and closes the scissors, holds paper with the non-dominant hand, manipulates and turns paper with non-dominant hand, keeps elbows at side, and is able to open and close scissors with controlled movements. The order of complexity for cutting shapes. When assessing a student's ability to cut shapes, you want to begin by determining their ability to cut on a single straight line. Once that is mastered, they will then proceed to cut out curved lines, followed by zigzag lines, then simple shapes like a circle and square, and lastly to cutting complex shapes. Tips and tricks for cutting. For straight lines, use alligator bites. Open the scissors wide, making large cuts or chomps, opening and closing the scissors all the way with each cut. For curved shapes, use bunny bites. Place paper all the way into scissor opening and make small cuts, but do not close the scissors completely when cutting. Cut Play-Doh. Using different types or thicknesses of paper, 
You can cut cardstock, construction paper, white computer paper. Use hungry cutters to help cut on a straight line. Use thicker lines to cut to increase success. OT recommendations for scissors. If you were to purchase or ask us for the type of items we use or recommend for carryover in the classroom, these are a few of the most common items. The hungry cutters assist in positioning the scissors and the spring loaded and loop scissors are for the student who lacks proper grasp and muscle strength to open the scissors. We understand that many teachers are looking for practical ways to incorporate basic fine motor skills into their daily classroom routines. Here are a list of ideas and activities that can easily be utilized within the classroom setting. Lacing beads, playing with small Legos, pinching or picking up items with clothespins or their fingers, using tongs or tweezers to pick up small objects, placing pennies into a piggy bank, screwing and unscrewing container lids, playing and manipulating Play-Doh, popping bubble wrap for finger isolation, tearing paper, snipping paper, writing shapes and letters in sand or shaving cream, or really any kind of tactile manipulative, using wiki sticks to form shapes and letters, geo boards with rubber bands, pegboards, and push pins.